speaker is Dr. Our next speaker is Dr. Yuan Yuan Liu. Dr. Liu is a STEM investigator from NIDCR. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Liu. We can yes. hear you, Dr. Liu. So, uh, and also the screen, you, you can see the screen? Looks good. Yes. Okay. So I would like to thank uh, this kind invitation. And uh, I joined NIDCR uh, uh, just prior to the pandemic. So today I'll present uh, some of my praise work and some you know, latest um, progress uh, in my lab. So, so uh, one of our labs main interest focus on the functional uh, dissection of the descending circuits, um, connecting the cortex, our cortex, our mind, and the spinal cord, our body in sensory model or control. So in current view, of cortical spinal sensory model control, the primary somatosensory sensory cortex uh, receives and processes those ascending somatosensory sensory information, while the primary motor cortex <coughs> integrating signals from multiple brain regions serves as a direct output to control, for example, the goal-directed uh, movement. So, however, when we take a closer look at this, uh, you know, <clears throat> class the textbook view of this, you know, model, uh, some long-standing observations seem not to be easily explained. Um, for example, I just want to point out here. I shows uh, I show you a transverse spinal section with a CST cortical spinal tract axons. Um, labeled using the EMX1 Cree reporter line. As shown here, besides uh, projecting to the intermediate and ventral spinal cord, which are known for control motor functions, so CST axons also densely terminate in the deep dorsal hole, where a variety of mechanosensory efferents innovate. And more interestingly, uh, such you know, sensory home projection pattern is evolutionarily conserved in all mammals. For example, uh, in a classic study by uh, Colin Jones uh, in 1970s, they showed that if they injected an anti-grade anti tracer into the smaller sensory contacts in monkeys, clearly the descending axons uh, primarily innovate uh, in the deep dorsal hole, especially those derived from the 3B area, which, uh, which you know, uh, represents touch uh, in primates. So thus, we want to ask the question, why does such a traditional model pathway, because as I just said, context to the spinal cord descending, people believe this is a model pathway. If that were true, why such model pathway axons terminate uh, you know, in the sensory hole. Does that mean our mind can directly control our sensation? <clears throat> so um, before I just move forward to you know, real data, I want to share with you uh, two episodes from one of my favorite movies. It's from Lawrence of Arabia. So in the first episode, we can see that Mr. Lawrence Uh, he showed off his techniques by using his fingers to extinguish those match fires. So in the second one, when his friends try to, you know, mimic what he did. Oh, it hurts. Certainly it hurts. But what's the trick then? The trick, William Potter, is not minding that it hurts. Okay, so he, his friends definitely failed it. Then he asked about the trick. And Lawrence's answer is the trick is that not minding that it hurts. 
So that suggests probably our mind has, you know, a, you know, capacity to control our sensation. So um, to initiate our study, we first performed a surgery called pumidotomy. So this surgery leads into the cortical spinal axon at the brainstem level, so that the spinal projections were ablated, while the soma, the cell body, and the subcortical sub projection of cortical spinal neurons leave uh, intact. So this method allows us to specifically examine the role of cortical spinal tract axons spinal projection. So mice with pyramidotomy were then, you know, subject <coughs> for a battery of sensory tests. So first we discovered that the high point withdrawal responses uh, to noxious stimuli, including both thermal and mechanical, were intact in mice with the pyramidotomy. So in contrast, uh, mice with CST lesions showed reduced uh, response to stroking uh, with a soft paintbrush. And also uh, in the von Free test in which the punctate mechanical stimuli of different pressures are delivered onto the plantar uh, hypoxia, mice with CST lesions, uh, they exhibited reduced response uh, to innocuous low pressure uh, punctate stimuli, but maintained normal sensitivity to high mechanical forces which activate nociceptors. So this result indicated that CST ablation selectively impairs light touch response. In addition, such defects in light touch responses are likely due to sensory detection because as I just showed, the motor response, the high pole withdrawal response uh, are relatively normal to other stimuli. So uh, we would ask, like, is there any structure to function correlation to such, you know, you know function specificity in, in deficits? So uh, anatomically, primary sensory afferents terminate, as we may know, with a specific distribution pattern in the dorsal form. So in general, uh, nociceptive afferents primarily innovate the superficial dorsal hole where CST axons avoid. While those low threshold mechanical sensory inputs terminate in the deep dorsal hole where CST axons project. So those axons from the cortex terminate in the deep dorsal hole and you know, coincident with uh, low threshold mechanical sensory afferents. And we speculate they modulate the tactile <clears throat> sensory processing to facilitate the interaction of animals with environment and social partners. And in, in contrast, the nociceptive responses usually occur in escape survival conditions um, <clears throat> and the need to be fast acting without much cortical influences. And this was nicely demonstrated by uh, Cliff Wolf's lab many, many years ago in these celebrated rants and recently um, by my colleague, uh, Alex Chancellor at NICCH. And he did, re he did reveal a spinal brainstem loop that is responsible for such escape survival you know, behavior. <clears throat> So next to determine which areas of the cerebral cortex contain cortical spinal neurons that might account for the dorsal home projection, uh, we injected the anterior tracers at multiple cortical regions. So as shown here, the uh, CST <coughs> axons originated from the hind limb uh, somatosensory cortex with a minor contribution of the secondary somatosensory cortex predominantly uh, project to the deep dorsal hole. And in contrast, uh, those originated from the uh, motor cortex, highly motor cortex, showed a more ventral innovation pattern. So these results suggested that the cortical spinal neurons in the somatosensory cortexes are likely to execute and control over tactile processing in the spinal cord. So to test this further, uh, we intersectionally ablated cortical spinal neurons uh, located in the high, high 
you know, hide limb S1 and S2 areas. To do that, we first injected a high efficient retrograde labeling lentiviruses developed by uh, Dr. Kabayashi's group. So next we injected AAVs uh, that contain crane dependent uh, human diphtheria toxin receptors or GFP uh, into just, you know, non crane dependent GFP into the cortex. So as, as shown here, uh, we can see that the cortical spinal neurons within the somatosensory cortex were, you know, sufficiently and specifically uh, ablated. So um, then taking the von Frey as example, we found that mice with S1, S2 cortical spinal neuron ablation largely phenocopied the results from the pyramidotomy. Therefore, uh, we concluded that some of the sensory cortical spinal neurons contribute to tactile sensitivity. So our uh, touch definitely plays a very important role in our daily life. However, under certain pathological conditions, touch could trigger robust pain, named the mechanical allodynia, a prominent feature of peripheral neuropathic pain. So to uh, mimic this condition, uh, we <clears throat> collaborate with Dr. Cliff Wolf's lab and introduced a very well established model uh, named the spread nerve injury uh, SNI. So in this model, the two branches of sciatic nerve will be crushed and ligated and crushed and ligated, leaving the third branch, sural nerve, uh, intact. And the mice uh, with SNI will develop different forms of allodynia. So here I just uploaded two videos on trying to give you an impression how the same mice uh, respond to the same tactile innocuous stimulation before and after SNI. Uh, as we can see in intact mice, if you give a stroke, a gentle brush, you'll see mice will have some hind paw withdrawal behavior. But the same gentle gentle touch, if we perform this, you know, pathological model, you can see even just with very, very gentle touch, and mice will show strong, you know, pain, uh, high pole flinching and gardening. And if you run the conditional place aversion test, they'll show a strong aversion to this gentle touch, indicate they did develop uh, you know, uh, pain to, it, to the innocuous, you know, tactile stimulation. So uh, with this, uh, we collaborate with Arben uh, Latremia, in, uh, who's now an um, assistant professor at Johns Hopkins Medical School to perform a blind behavioral test. We, uh, we want to ask, does the CST modulate mechanical allodynia? So uh, we found that mice with CST ablation showed profound reduction of mechanical allodynia at all days tested. So when using the von Frey uh, tester for punctate allodynia, as we can see, they show uh, the reduced the reduced threshold in control mice are uh, <clears throat> approached back. They are now close to that before SNI. And similarly for dynamic allodynia, the flinching time, as I just showed in the video, now is significantly diminished. 13 minutes, Kevin. So, yes, thank you. This indicates that cortical spinal neural inputs are required for the induction of mechanical allodynia. So we next took a further step to look whether the S1, S2 cortical spinal neurons are required for mechanical allodynia. And we showed that after SNI, those neurons, those ablation of only S1, S2 uh, <clears throat> cortical spinal neuron, I should remind that in this case, we only ablated those dorsal home projection, as I just showed, is sufficient to reduce both the punctate and dynamic allodynia. Here, I just use punctate allodynia as an example. So to brief summarize this first part, the descending output outputs from the somatosensory context contribute to both tactile uh, and neuropathic pain sensitivity. 
So naturally, we would ask which neurons in the spinal dorsal hole mediate this CST dependent on facilitation of tactile uh, processing. So our uh, recent findings um, from, for example, from Gindi, uh, David Gindi's lab and have a medical school <coughs> and Martin Gooding's lab at Salk Institute, they all, all they you know, discovered many subtypes of dorsal home interneurons that receive the co-innovation uh, by the CSD exon, the descending here, and the low threshold mechanosensory inputs, mainly the A beta fibers. So uh, among them, uh, we focused on the excitatory interneuron, which is marked by CCK. Uh, <clears throat> they reside in the deep dorsal hole. Previous studies already showed that selective silencing of these neurons results in specific tactile deficits. So to study this further, we found that a specific blazing of lumbar CCK interneurons substantially reduced mechanical allodynia. So a more important question is, are CST inputs required for the CCK neurons to modulate mechanical sensory processing? To answer that question, we collaborate with uh, Ching Fei Chen at Boston Children's Hospital to perform uh, <clears throat> the wholesale patch clamping in CCK on positive neurons in prepared ex vivo spinal slices. So we first injected uh, AAVs that carry channel reduction into the somatosensory cortex so that the descending input can now be opto-stimulated. So we, uh, we established electrical uh, stimulating protocol, we can selectively activate A-beta fibers. So to uh, make long story short, so we found uh, in those neurons that receives, you know, monosynaptic connection with both A beta and the CST, that if uh, if we co-stimulation of the afferents and the descending pathways, this will lead to super additive synaptic responses with a substantial increased action potential output, and in the presence of uh, bicuculin and uh, strengthening the gabinergic and glycinergic receptor inhibitor to mimic uh, disinhibition occurs that after SNI, such an, an additive response will further enhanced with action potential trains occurring in all recorded uh, CCK neurons. So therefore these neurons, CSD input onto the CCK interneurons sensitize the processing of tactile input. So I will skip this um, summarize and ask, uh, you know, tell, tell me a little bit about future, what we are doing now, about the, what are missing links. First, we, we really want to know what are the roles of the smaller sensory cortical spinal neurons in sensory processing, not only like dynamic or eupunctic touch. And second, we are, we are, we are eager to know which spinal neurons link the mechanical allodynia to some of the sensory cortical spinal neurons. So for the first, for the first uh, <clears throat> part, uh, we, we want to ask a question, what do the left majority span, uh, some of the sensory cortical spinal neuron do? And we, we did some functional mapping. We can see only a small portion response to either dynamic or punctual tactile stimulation. But there are different forms of tactile stimulation. Uh, on top of that, there are proprioception. So uh, hopefully, we can uh, map the modality representations within the rodent uh, somatosensory cortical spinal neurons. And interestingly, after SNI, we did see there were some convergent of those neuronal uh, example representations. So that's what does that mean? And we are also trying to explore the pathological conditions, how our somatosensory cortical spinal neurons represent different sensory modalities. Uh, for the second, uh, a goal, we are trying how to identify pain evoked neuronal enzyme bones. So we are using the strategy to use a trap two mice developed by Lee Chin Law's lab. So with a tamoxifen induction upon different stimuli, here I just use mechanical allodynia as example. This line allows us to transiently capture those neurons that were activated by you know different pain. So I'm sorry, Dr. Liu, um, your time has, I'm sorry yeah. for interrupting. Okay, yeah, actually I can, I can stop here. 
and to acknowledge uh, here, just, you know, uh, I, my lab just, uh, you know, it's labs prior to the pandemic. We um, have one postdoc and three postdocs now at NIH. So we are also, I 